In fact, the Word of God tells us that if you belong to Jesus, do I have any Jesus believers in the house today? Listen, then the Scripture says this, that you're His sheep and you know His voice. The truth is that God has been speaking to humanity all along. Beginning even in the time of man's innocence in the Garden of Eden. The Scripture is very plain about those early days. You see, God created a place. It was a perfect environment. And it was called the Garden of Eden. One can only imagine the beauty of the Garden. And I believe that the Scripture alludes to that which was God's habit. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 8 says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. What a beautiful picture of Adam and Eve having a daily conversation with God. Now, we really don't know how to adequately demonstrate what God looked like. How many of you know that's an impossibility, right? Nor can we create the beauty of the Garden of Eden. But this is one thing that we absolutely know for certain, that Adam and Eve, on a daily basis, had a conversation with God. Before God gave Adam his wife Eve, Adam had the task of naming all of the creatures that God had created. And God spoke to Adam as well about the keeping of the garden. And in particular, in an important conversation, he gave a very important word of instruction. Genesis chapter 2 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. God had said that if you eat of the tree you will die. And of course, we know what happened, right? Satan appeared in the garden in the form of a serpent. And he deceived Eve in a conversation that was designed to cast doubt on God's credibility. Satan deceived the very heart of Eve. God had said that if you eat of the tree, you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when Eve saw that the tree was good for food, and she saw that it was pleasant to the eyes, she thought in her mind, that if she ate it, she would become wise and even become like God. The Scripture tells us that she took of the fruit and she ate of it. And she gave to her husband with her. And he also ate of it. And the Bible tells us that this was the fall of mankind. We lost our innocence. And the Word of God tells us what happened. It says that then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings and they hid in the garden. And the beautiful thing that I want everyone to grasp today is that God still came looking to have a conversation God who is all-knowing, God who knows everything. He knew exactly what had happened. But yet we can see God in the garden calling out to Adam, Adam, where are you? Eve, where are you? Certainly he knew where they were hiding. 
but he wanted them to respond. You see, that shows us the very heart of our God. How much he wants to have a conversation with them. Then as he found Adam and Eve, he told them the consequences that their sin had brought. He told them that from this point on, the woman would have pain in childbirth. He told them that the man would have to work by the sweat of his brow. And and that the serpent was cursed and that he would have to crawl on his belly all for the rest of his life. Unfortunately, because of God's justice Adam and and Eve's disobedience, God had to dispel them from the garden. But I want you to hear the loving heart of our God today. Before God did that, God took an animal and He killed it. And He made for them something to cover their nakedness with. You see, they had tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. And in this most important first conversation with God as a, and, with, and man as a fallen being, God showed His loving heart and His gracious heart because basically what God was saying, He was saying, I'm going to accept the blood of this animal that was slain instead of your blood because the Scripture tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And, and yes, Adam and Eve did die in the physical sense, but the good news is this, that they were spiritually covered by the garments that God had made, the tunics of skin. And God showed mankind His love. How many of you realize that God could have in just a moment just wiped out Adam and Eve? But no, God chose to cover them because He loved them. Come on, can we give God a big hand today? Amen. How loving our God is. Well, we also know that at that point, God had to cast them out of the garden. And this began a period in man's history that was very difficult. Instead of turning to God, many in the culture of that day began to just think of wickedness continually at all times. The book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5 tells us, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And there were some, of course, that walked with God, Some like Enoch. Others called upon the name of the Lord. And here's the good news. I want you to hear this today. Wherever there was anyone, even in those days which were incredibly wicked, in those days, those who sought God, who looked for God, God would come and He would converse with them and have a conversation with them. Genesis chapter 6 tells us this, that the Lord was sorry that He had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and the birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. There was one man on the face of the earth who caught God's attention. The Scripture describes him as being a just man, perfect in his generations. And the Scripture says that Noah walked with God. I want you to hear what I'm saying over and over again. The scriptural record is clear that whenever someone chose to walk with God, God not only found the way to cleanse them of their sinfulness, but He also communicated with them and had a conversation with them. The Scripture tells us that the earth was corrupt before God and filled with violence. And God had looked upon the earth and seen the corrupt world that that was in that day. And God was going to destroy the world. But because of the grace that Noah had found in the eyes of the Lord, God gave Noah a divine warning. It must have been a huge conversation. But God revealed to Noah what was going to happen. God revealed to him that the sky was going to drop its moisture to the ground in the form of rain. God revealed to him that the earth was going to have flood waters and that everything on the earth would perish. And God said, you will need to build an ark. 
And God revealed to him how many decks the ark would have, gave him the exact plans, exactly what to do, how to make the ark, how to cover it with pitch. And, and so Noah had this conversation with God, and Noah was able to save himself and his wife and his household. Why? Because he had walked with God, and he had found God's grace. And by God's grace, he obeyed the Lord. And the Scripture tells us that Noah built the ark. It took Noah 120 years to build the ark. Can you imagine such a labor as that? Tradition even says that after Noah had cut down the trees around where he was building, that he planted new trees and saw them grow into large trees and then cut those trees down as well. I would imagine that it became quite a spectacle. Noah busy building the ark. And, I, and people would come along. And I mean, there was no body of water near there. And people would come along. And they would look at the crazy man and his family and wonder, what is this guy doing? And Noah would tell them the conversation that he had had with God. Warning them that it was time that they get right. Warning them. And at the appropriate time, when the ark was finished, God supernaturally caused the animals to come into the ark. Obviously, that must have caused a great crowd to come and assemble themselves where the ark was. And Noah stood on the bow of that great ark, and he told the people what God had said. Noah warned the people in fervent preaching, and he said this, listen, it is going to rain. A flood is coming. The entire earth will be covered with water, and if you don't get into the ark, you will perish. Noah tried to tell the people of his day of the conversation that he had had with God. He was a preacher of righteousness, but the Bible says that the people laughed. They mocked. They made fun of him. And finally, Noah entered into the ark, and God shut the door. The Scripture tells us that it began to rain. Forty days and nights it rained. The Bible tells us that the fountains of the deep broke up, and the whole earth was covered with water. And the Bible states that everything that there was was destroyed except that which was in the ark. And the important thing for you and I to remember as we look at God's Word today, as we look at this situation today, the important thing for us to understand is that God offered a way for those in that generation to be saved. In His conversation with man through Noah, He was willing to take anyone who believed in His Word. Had the worst sinner ever gotten on that ark, he would have been saved. All they had to do was believe. All they had to do do is trust and act and get on that ark. But the scripture tells us that only Noah and his family, eight souls in all, were saved on that ark. To make a long story short, for many days the floodwaters were upon the face of the earth. And when they finally did subside, God had another conversation with Noah. And God set his rainbow in the sky as the sign of his covenant. The rainbow symbolized God's promise that He would never flood the earth again with a universal flood. And of course, after the flood, men and women continued. Some followed in God's ways, and others followed in the ways of those who did not obey the Lord. But you see, God's heart had never changed. God has always been a God who wants to be with His people and converse with His people.